<laughs> um, so I'm going to take this, uh, this simple document. Um, I'm going to open it. And if you open it in a, in a typical PDF viewer, this is on Linux, but it doesn't really matter. Um, uh, versus LibreOffice Draw, and we'll take the, the, the current release. Um, I'm going to show you the uh, side by side in a second. Um, the, the blue frames are not part of the, the, the rendering, they're just to, to distinguish the different applications. And uh, also, when you open it in LibreOffice Draw, there's a grid, so that's not a bug, that's just fine. Uh, but let's. So, have a have sense of how these things look. And this is, this is when the, the system I'm running it on has all the fonts. So this is not about missing fonts. So these are just our, uh, our bugs. OK, so um, uh, what, do, what, what problems are we seeing here? There, is, uh, there are issues with positioning, issues with spacing, issues with font selection. We're not choosing the right fonts. Uh, there's overlap of, of words. And that's just the immediately visible ones. There's also the fact that we're not reconstituting um, uh, the document structures. So like uh, Chalma was, uh, was saying before, there are stretches of text, but, uh, but not you know, paragraphs one after another, um, and other structural features. Can yes? I, can I ask a preliminary question? Do you have the same uh, rendering results if you open the PDF uh, from Writer using the... Uh, um, uh, it's ex so th they would be extremely similar, okay. yes. Um, so that's one aspect of motivation for even having this discussion um, of, of improving um, uh, uh, LibreOffice as a PDF editor, but that's even just as a PDF opener. Um, then another aspect of motivation is this uh, kind of uh, ar archetypal um, uh, exchange that we, you might see on the bug tracker on our bugzilla. So some user opens a new bug and says, please improve some aspect of functionality involving how we open PDFs or edit PDFs in, in LibreOffice. And then someone from the QA says, oh, but you know, um, uh, we're, not, uh, we, we, we're really uh, not going to be doing that because LibreOffice is not a PDF editor. So if you're asking for uh, better support for editing PDFs, that's out of scope. And then I join the discussion, and then I say, but, but come on, LibreOffice is a PDF editor. What, what are you talking about? And the reply is, no, so, so LibreOffice is not a PDF editor. We support importing PDFs. We support editing the, 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 the structure document that you get from importing the PDFs. And we also support exporting it to a PDF. But it's not. A, and then, then my answer is, but you know, this this is what makes it a PDF editor. Uh, yes, yes, Mike. Uh, standard person. Um, so no, not not necessarily. It's not the same person every time. Plus, I'm going to present these arguments in a more convincing manner in a second. This is just an archetypal exchange, which motivates the, this uh, this talk. So uh, I, I hope I haven't. Well, at the end of the talk, you'll tell me whether I've offended you or not. And this, and this goes on because you can repeat this, uh, this exchange uh, several times. Um, and, then, and then the third part of the motivation is, uh, so, so I'm, I'm not really going to give a talk about uh, you know, winning an argument that, that I've had with someone on a bug page. There's actually an even more substantial uh, motive, but I won't tell you uh, what it is right away. Um, although Italo actually kind of knows if he's still here, but yeah. Um, so this will be our, our mystery that I hope you will figure out as we progress uh, in our discussion. So um, uh, let's try to, let, I, I hope I can make the fair argument against um, uh, considering LibreOffice as a PDF editor. And if I haven't, you'll have to excuse me because I'm biased. Um, so 
PDF is not a format that's intended for, um, uh, for editing. Um, uh, it's a final present or presentational format, mostly or essentially. And uh, other than the, the tags, which we heard about an hour ago, um, uh, and, and are very often or most usually not present, there is no semantic decomposition of the contents um, of a PDF. The, you don't, we don't have indications of things like sections or paragraphs or, or breaks within, within line, to the next line. Um, uh, and we don't have information about a lot of the, the constructs that we have in, in our structured documents. So things like tables or columns or document objects and groupings of things and what's the header, the footer as opposed to the main part of, of a page and uh, what's a footnote, etc., etc. Um, uh, and, and also things like uh, what's a, a numbering as opposed to just text or how text is aligned. Um, uh, we do have positioning information, but there's nobody saying that that means this text is justified or this, this text is on the left edge of something. And certainly not things like tabs. And, uh, and also not, not really any style information. Of course, the, the individual element that, that, that's in the PDF is, is styled, so to speak, but nothing tells us this styling is the same styling as we have elsewhere in a different run of text. Um, uh, so, so all of that uh, information that we, we need and we would, an editor has and, and uses and needs, a PDF basically doesn't have. Um, of course, the, the PDFs do carry all of the specific information that, that is required to actually render the document. Um, and, uh, and like uh, Chalme mentioned, if you use that mostly, um, you, and, and th because of this, and if you use a different kind of filter that, that uh, doesn't you know, extract structure, just renders it the way, th like in, in a presentational sense, uh, say using the, the pdf -ium filter, then you can get very good rendering of the, the PDF inside LibreOffice, but then you can't do anything with it. It's just like, it's similar to an image. Um, and so you can either do that or, or you do the, use the input filter, which gives you a bit of the structure, but not a lot of it. Um, uh, so, and, and so that's one reason we shouldn't consider it as a PDF editor. Another reason is that uh, the, the import and, uh, and, and the export are separate from each other and they're imperfect. And uh, they really, and they don't produce something that is uh, that is an um, uh, uh, you know authentic representation of the actual structure of a PDF. We make it into something else, as though we would take uh, like a sort of a sketch. Some some artist would take a sketch of what's in, in the document, then he would work on the sketch, and then we would save it to some something else, or like photocopy the sketch. And, um, and that, that means that, that whatever, whatever problems we might have with the import filter and the, ec and the export filter, they, they expound each other and make uh, everything, uh, and, and so every such problem bec becomes even more serious. Um, and, and another reason, no less important, is the in intentional reason. That is, um, uh, it's not supposed to be a PDF editor. We, we've never decided that I know of to offer a PDF editor um, uh, or P so PDF editing capability, we got it through having an import filter, but we did not design um, uh, uh, draw or writer or any other module for editing PDFs. And, uh, and actually some, some contributors think that it's, it's a bad idea to even invest effort in, uh, in, in enhancing these capabilities. Um, and, and, and so maybe it's, it's an inappropriate use of project resources uh, to work on something or to improve something that we never decided we want. Um, and here is a semi-quote, not of Mike, um, uh, uh, that we actually need to do, the, uh, yeah, spelling error. We need to manage the expectations of our users who now might be mistakenly believing that, uh, that LibreOffice is a PDF editor um, because it isn't, and if they expect it to be, then they will be disappointed. So like I said, 
I hope this was, uh, I, I related the argument, uh, the argument fairly, um, uh, but definitely uh, check out the relevant bugs if you want to like um, read it, uh, read the, the actual proponents of uh, this position, which is not mine. Um, and, uh, and now, so I, I want to think along together with you on, uh, about this question and put it in, in perspective. Uh, through several prisms, um, one of them is functional, that is um, uh, how relevant are we or how relevant is LibreOffice to, to the, the use cases that, that people do PD PDF editing in. Um, then also something more formal, so what is it, should, it, should we consider LibreOffice as a program which meets the definition of an editor? And, uh, and finally, um, uh, mention public perceptions. So what, do, what does the public think or what does the internet think about um, uh, LibreOffice as a PDF editor? Um, I'll start with the functional part, which is perhaps the most educational. Um, uh, so let's talk about, yeah, let's talk about cases in which uh, uh, a typical office suite user or typical user would want to edit a PDF document. Um, of course, this is my opinion, perception, experience, and I've not conducted like an, an, a proper survey or anything like that. Um, but I think you'll probably agree with me that if these, are, and I have like four or five cases, there might be another one that you might mention or, or you might claim that one of them is not as significant. But, uh, but here is the way I see it. So perhaps the most common or very common use case is uh, getting a form in, the, in, in PDF format. So some organization, could be the government, could be the TDF, could be a company, has a, a procedure in place which requires us filling a form. And uh, the form is not available um, uh, uh, interactively. Uh, it's available statically as a, as a rendered PDF document. And, uh, and the document is dumb, so it doesn't have uh, form controls, which the PDF format supports. It's just a, a rendered, like a rendered piece of paper, or the, the file equivalent of a piece of paper. Um, and uh, and maybe it's even a physical form that somebody scanned. Although then you might want to extract the image, but never mind that. So that's the, that's the PDF that we got. Um, uh, and it, it's very, co oh, missing font, yeah. Uh, so the, the, the font here is supposed to be different. Anyway, so we, we've gotten this file. We need to submit the form. So we need to edit the PDF. And um, of course, if it's a smart PDF with form controls, then we wouldn't use a, uh, an office suite. We'd just use a PDF viewer. So what kind of, what kind of editing would we do in this case? We would need to add text within boxes or on lines. Uh, we, we might need to add like individual digits when you have like, when you want to fill out your uh, ID number or phone number. We might need to insert a signature or another image from somewhere. Um, uh, we might need to be able to check a box or mark it with an X or, or fill it with, with black or some kind of color. Um, we may want to strike out some text. We want, may want to circle some texts. Um, or maybe we might have a free form area in which we want to insert all sorts of contents. So that's one use case. And uh, I claim that it's quite uh, likely for a user to expect to do this kind of work in LibreOffice. And again, now, now we're in the part of the presentation where, where it's, it's my opinion. So uh, if, you, if you disagree, uh, that you're, you're of course entitled to. Um, a second use case is when we want to do markup or, or add commentary on the PDF. So somebody sent us a file, somebody sent me their slides for, uh, for this conference, and I want to provide all sorts of comments, but I don't want to edit their, their presentation. So I want to add some text, on, I want to uh, mark certain areas, there is, and there is some overlap with the previous use case. Now doing this is also, this is not extremely common, but it also happens occasionally. Um, uh, 
And this is, this is, it's less clear we want to use a proper editor for this because uh, the PDF specific tools, um, uh, whether it's commercial like Acrobats or even PDF viewers or like viewers plus, uh, often have some features for doing uh, annotation. So it's not clear that people would, would turn to something like an office suite um, uh, uh, for doing, for this use case. Another use case is that um, uh, you have a, a document that is supposed to be the final form, but you notice that you need to make some changes to it. It's, it's your document or a document of, say, uh, a colleague of yours, but maybe there's a typo in it or a phrase that's missing or uh, a, a graphics is misplaced or misaligned or something is missing, um, uh, and you can't uh, use the original document. So you can't take the original document, make the change, reproduce the PDF. Uh, maybe you don't have access to it, or you don't have access to some of the fonts it uses, or other artifacts. So um, you have no choice but to take the PDF and make an edit to that uh, itself. Uh, this is another very, I mean, very common case of uh, PDF editing. And, uh, and this is something we might expect to want uh, to do in LibreOffice. If the, the import fil filter were good enough, then making, making this sort of changes, possibly we would consider an, an office suite or something like draw a writer uh, uh, for doing. Um, and another use case is uh, when you want to combine pages. So we have maybe some existing PDFs or we have um, uh, uh, content from some of the LibreOffice modules or other applications, and maybe we have some images, and, uh, and you want to combine all these things as different pages within a single PDF. Maybe we want to concatenate them, and maybe we want to cut out some of the pages and include other pages, or you want to do some rearrangement. Um, and and this, when does this happen? So if you're writing a letter and you want to add attachments or, uh, or, or you've worked on some complex document in several applications, maybe you have a page in Calc and a page in, in Writer and uh, an image that you worked on somewhere. Um, and maybe you, you, it's the form filling case, but you actually don't need all the pages, so you want to drop some of the pages, etc. Um, and this is, this is another use case that's extremely common. And, uh, and, this, and here it's not, cl not clear to me whether an office suite is where we would want to do this because this is less about the actual editing of the content and more about the arrangement. And again, there are like custom apps or utilities which are better tailored to do this. But if, if uh, LibreOffice were really good in, in, in importing content, then maybe it would still make sense. So not entirely clear. And, uh, and the final use case is uh, when, okay, so I'm gonna skip one of these um, because we're short on time. And the final use case, and the least, rele and least relevant for us, is uh, when you wanna make uh, precision alterations. So, you, you want to make changes to the specific structure represented in, in a PDF, and even though you're changing things, the rest of the contact must be maintained pristinely and precisely, and, uh, and this is, if you're doing some kind of professional typesetting, then you might need to be able to do this. Um, uh, um, maybe you, you want to do some programmatic generation of documents, um, or, or other similar cases. And this is a niche use case, which is really not fitting um, uh, the way an office suite, or specifically LibreOffice, works with documents, because the kind of structure, like the, the, um, uh, the native structure of the PDF is just not something that we work with, so we definitely would not want to work with uh, LibreOffice on something like that. So functionally, we've, we have some use cases that are more relevant and some use cases that are less relevant. And this is independently of how, how well we, we, uh, we can import PDFs. So, so that was the functional part. And now for the, uh, for the formal part, 
then uh, so if, if we look at uh, the dictionary and we look for the definition of an editor, then, uh, then here are a few definitions of, of what an editor is. And, uh, and, and if we take, if I combine these three, uh, these three definitions, which you really don't have to memorize, they're uh, the, the parts of the definition that, uh, that are important. So it needs to be a computer program that works on data, and it needs to be able to create or change the data, or, or correct the data, or read what's stored and make changes to that. And, uh, and so, so technically, if we take the, these parts of the definition, then, then, then yeah, we are, a, we are a computer program. We can create PDFs. We can open PDFs, although not perfectly. And we can make changes or corrections, but not really to the original PDF, but for, to something that's not the PDF. It's a, it's a, it's the result of a, of a somewhat destructive process. And plus, we have so many issues and the things that are introduced by the, the import filters that it's, it's hard to, to say we, we really can properly make these changes. So actually, my argument for meeting the formal definition is not such a strong argument for, uh, um, for LibreOffice as a PDF editor. Um, uh, so I regretfully have to, to concede that, uh, that part of the argument or the, the discussion. Um, but now is now's the, mo the more interesting part. Um, so public perception. Um, so first let's do, let's search on YouTube. I, I've searched for, I, I did this a few days ago as I was preparing the presentation. I searched for how to edit a PDF. And the top result is how to edit a PDF free by this guy. Um, uh, uh, and here is the, like, the image that you get. This is from 2020, so we've approved a bit, maybe. And uh, here's what he suggests. First, he suggests Microsoft Word, because you, you supposedly have already paid for it or gotten it somehow, so you can use that. Um, uh, then he suggests this web application, uh, which is uh, it's mixed uh, free and like it's a freemium kind of arrangement, but there are some free features there. And the third uh, possibility is LibreOffice Draw. And these are his three suggestions, so that's like the top result and the, by far the most, uh, the most popular. Um, now, what happens if we ask uh, ChatGPT? And by the way, you can ask ChatGPT anonymously um, uh, if you follow the link that's in, in my slides. Uh, how do I edit a PDF? So you get a bunch of text. It's you know, very um, uh, conversational. And it uh, tells us the few methods you can consider to edit PDFs. Um, uh, and these are a few applications. Some of these are online. And, and we're not on here at all. So, uh, um, uh, but Google Docs is. And we're not that, that bad compared to Google Docs. And, uh, and um, I don't know about preview. So I, I asked it another question, um, because those, that's all commercial software. So how to edit a PDF with FOSS? And now it said this. To edit a PDF with FOSS, you can follow these steps. Install an editor, and then use the editor. So which editors does it suggest? We're number one, so Microsoft somehow likes us. Um, uh, PDF Sam, Inkscape, and Scribus. And uh, we won't go into comparison of all of these, but this, but we're the like the top FOSS suggestion from uh, from ChatGPT, and and then let, let's also do like a, a plain uh, web search on how to edit a PDF file, and uh, we'll use. Unfortunately, I'm using Google because it's the most popular, but you should really not use Google for anything at all because they spy on you, so let's not use Google. But uh, most people do that. So what does, what does Google suggest? So Google suggests several things. Microsoft Word and, and, and uh, some online apps and LibreOffice Draw. So it's, it's the main apps it suggests are Office Suites, our main competitor, and us. Um, uh, so I know we're a bit short on time, but I started late, so I'm going to steal some of the, uh, the, the <laughs> some of the time from the next talk. 
So you, would, you thought that I might now put these perspectives together and, and, and reach a conclusion, right? So I, I'm not going to do that at all um, because think of what we've seen here. LibreOffice is perceived as one of the top, if not the top, PDF editor that's free and open source software. So wh which means that people find it and download it and use it for non-niche and more common PDF editing scenarios. And, and that means that even though we've never made the decision for this to be the case, we sort of have an, an extra variant of a module, so in, in, especially in, in, in draw. So it can be either impress for presentations, draw for drawings, or the PDF editor module, which is draw for drawings. And effectively, we have that. And, and it doesn't really matter whether LibreOffice is a PDF editor or not. What matters is that, at least in terms of FOSS, or free software, it is the PDF editor. And that's, that's, a, that's a public fact. But why, why does this matter? It matters because, um, uh, uh, think about some of the challenges that we have when we're promoting LibreOffice. So we need to make people aware of, of, of the suite of LibreOffice. Um, uh, we need to give people reasons to prefer LibreOffice to Microsoft Office. We need to give people reasons or motivations to install, to download and install LibreOffice, even if they haven't necessarily chosen Microsoft Office over us. And we also want to, to build a, a good technical reputation for our Office suite. And the fact is that, that all of these are massively helped by those PDF editing use cases. Because millions of people um, are, may notice and pr probably are noticing LibreOffice not as an office suite, but as a way to edit PDFs, even if they don't care at all about switching from Microsoft Office or from anything else. And, um, uh, and that's, a, that's a consideration when choosing which office suite to use, because you have, at least on, in one of the features, if we could be better than Microsoft Office, then, then why not an, another um, uh, uh, point in favor of Libra? And, uh, and then also, if you've already installed this thing because you wanted to work on a PDF, you wanted to edit a PDF, then maybe you might just you know, try it for other documents and it's, since it's already on your system. And finally, if you know, if you've been impressed with how we're handling PDFs, and it's such a nice, such a nice piece of software, maybe it's, it's good overall. And, and, but of course, and, and, and I'll close with this, that we're not, even though that's a potential boon for us, we're not really there yet because, um, uh, um, because there isn't that much awareness um, that, that we, we are promoting of, of LibreOffice as a PDF editor. We're not the top contender if you remove the, the, the free software qualification. Um, uh, and Microsoft Office opens PDF with a similar or better quality to us. So that's embarrassing. Let, let's not be in this situation. We're not encouraging people to download LibreOffice as an editor of PDFs. And finally, the impression that people might get is that I'm, I'm so annoyed by some of these PDF import bugs that I'm seeing when I try to use um, uh, Draw as the PDF editor that I doubt whether the rest of LibreOffice is really all that good. So the, the boons are also like detriments if we don't, don't um, uh, handle this or, or, or invest effort here. And so with not very sig uh, I mean, significant but not terribly extensive coding effort, we can convert all of these detriments to the benefits from the previous slide. And with this, I will end my presentation. And thank you very much.